Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, where I talk about vampires, werewolves, and other supernatural creatures. In this video, I want to talk about what are the scariest vampires, and what makes a vampire scary. Vampires are one of the earliest horror icons going back to the 1897 Dracula novel and the first feature-length films, and without them, horror movies in general might never be where they are today. People have become more and more desensitized over time, so vampires have evolved with the audience and the outcome has brought some of my favorite movies. Before we talk about some of the scariest vampires, I want to talk about a book. Vampire World is a book series by P.T. Hilton and Jonathan Beneke, and they are actually today's sponsor. I listen to audiobooks all the time while relaxing or editing my videos, and if you didn't know, I'm interested in vampires. The Vampire World series takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where the only surviving humans live on an airship that follows the Earth's rotation to stay in the sun, and these vampires are more bestial and feral and must be avoided at all costs. I'm currently listening to the series and I've really been enjoying it. If this sounds interesting to you, their books are available on Audible and Kindle. It's also part of Audible Premium and Kindle Unlimited, so if you have those services, then you can get the book for free. I will have a link to the books in the description down below. Thanks so much to the Vampire World series for sponsoring the video. The first vampire I want to talk about is still widely considered one of the scariest despite the film's age, the classic Nosferatu. This 1922 German film tells the story of Count Orlok, a vampire with a rat-like appearance and a hunger for human blood. Orlok is ruthless and uncontrollable, and his presence alone is enough to send chills down the spine. One thing that makes Nosferatu such a scary looking vampire is the age of the film itself. The film was made over a hundred years ago and the techniques used to make movies were very different back then. The film is shot at a much lower frame rate than modern movies, which gives the movement of the characters a jerky and unnatural quality that adds to the overall creepiness of the film and the count. Another feature that contributes to the Nosferatu's terrifying appearance is the makeup and costume design. The character of Count Orlok is played by actor Max Schreck who is completely unrecognizable under the heavy makeup and prosthetics that were used to create the vampire's eerie, rat-like, otherworldly appearance. The extended limbs, sharp teeth, pale skin, and the dark hooded cloak all add to the character's unsettling presence on screen. But I still think the most frightening aspect of Nosferatu is the way that he moves. Like I said, because of the low frame rate, it gives his movements a stilted, almost robotic quality, as if he's not quite human. This, combined with the fact that he is an undead creature of the night, makes him a truly frightening and unsettling presence on screen. Another vampire that I would consider on the creepier side is the one from the movie Let the Right One In. The Swedish film follows the story of a young boy named Oscar who befriends a girl named Ellie, who just so happens to be a vampire. While Ellie may look like a normal child, her true nature is revealed as she struggles to control her thirst for blood. There are a few reasons why Ellie is particularly frightening as a vampire and one of them has to do with the fact that she is a child. People tend to find kids creepy in horror movies for a few reasons. One is that children are traditionally seen as innocent and pure, and when they are depicted as being evil or dangerous, it can be particularly unsettling. Children are also often depicted as being more vulnerable than adults, which makes their suffering and torment more distressing to watch. In the case of Ellie, her vampire nature only adds to the creepiness. She is shown as being very cold and calculating, with no apparent feelings or emotions. This, combined with her animalistic nature and childlike appearance, makes her a truly freaky character. But what makes a vampire truly frightening? For many, it's the idea of a creature that's human on the outside, but monstrous on the inside. Films like The Lost Boys and Near Dark explore this concept as their vampires can pass for human and blend in with society, making them all the more dangerous. But others think that a vampire that's monstrous on the outside is scary, and I guess it really depends because fear is subjective. I think some of the scariest vampire movies are those that pit humans against vampires in a realistic way, similar to the zombie survival feeling. In the 30 Days of Night series, a small town in Alaska is invaded by a group of vampires who prey on the town's residents. The vampires in this film are very inhuman, and the idea of being hunted by these creatures is truly terrifying. Unlike the traditional, romanticized versions of vampires that we often see in media, the vampires in 30 Days of Night are not something you want to see, or become. They are depicted as being especially feral, 
with twisted, deformed bodies with a full mouth of sharp, jagged teeth. They barely speak, and when they do, it's in a guttural, archaic-sounding language, while others prefer to let out horrifying screeches. Their appearance alone is enough to send shivers down your spine. But it's not just their appearance that makes these vampires so frightening. They're also incredibly unpredictable and uncontrollable. Unlike other vampires who might have some level of self-control and restraint, the vampires in 30 Days of Night seem to have no such limitations. At least not while they're hunting. They are purely driven by their bloodthirst and will stop at nothing to satisfy their hunger. New vampires are almost like mindless zombies. The vampires from 30 Days of Night are quite sadistic, using humans as bait, willing to torture their victims and mutilate them to lure others out. Human life means nothing to them, and their form of attack is quite brutal, ripping you apart with their sharp nails and teeth. Their appearance and unpredictability make the vampires in 30 Days of Night some of the scariest in my opinion. They seem like mindless animalistic monsters, but also creatures with a dark intelligence that makes them all the more dangerous. One more vampire I find to be scary, or creepy, is the Strigoi from The Strain. These vampires can strike horror into the viewer, but for some different reasons. The Strigoi have a very animalistic and pack-like nature. Unlike a lot of other vampires who might be more solitary creatures, the vampires in The Strain are shown to operate in very large groups. Dozens and dozens of them. They hunt and attack their prey together, kind of like a pack of zombies. Another unsettling aspect of the vampires in the strain is the way they feed. Rather than biting their victims with their teeth, these vampires have a long, stinger-like appendage that they use to drain their prey's blood. The stinger is a unique and disturbing way for vampires to feed. But perhaps the most disturbing aspect of the vampires in the strain is the worms that are present in their blood. These worms are shown to be able to infest humans who are bitten by the vampires, or if one just so happens to get on your skin. Once they get on you, these capillary worms quickly get into your bloodstream and reproduce. There are scenes where they use a blacklight and you can see hundreds and hundreds of these worms crawling underneath people's skin. For me, this element of body horror is particularly freaky. The idea of these worms possibly infesting you and taking over your body, turning you into a strigoi, is truly unique compared to any other vampire and adds an extra layer of horror to this show. When it comes to vampires, there seems to be a few things that make them more scary. Physical appearance for one. A vampire's appearance can go a long way in making them frightening, obviously, but it can be too over the top. It's best when it lies somewhere in the uncanny valley. Features like sharp teeth, pale skin, distorted facial features, and red eyes can all contribute to a creepy and unsettling look. Unpredictability can also be a big factor. This is the reason why zombies I think are so scary. The idea of a creature that is driven purely by their bloodthirst and has no sense of self-control can definitely add to the fear factor. Body horror can also go a long way, like I mentioned with the strain. But regardless of the vampire, you are always worried about being bitten, your blood drained, or turned into an undead creature. So this is kind of a level of body horror. Vampires are often associated with the unknown. The idea of a creature that is shrouded in mystery and has a long and unknown history can go a long way. I also have to give an honorable mention to the vampires from Afflicted. The fear factor of that movie was more due to the great found footage filming and sound design rather than the actual vampire, although it has its moments for sure. The vampires from Blood Red Sky also had a great design, feral nature, and a mysterious origin. I thought the flesh phantoms from American Horror Story were also pretty creepy. I think a lot of what made them creepy was the same thing that made Nosferatu creepy. Their strange, jerky movements. Someone also left a comment telling me to check out the cauliflower-headed, unibrowed, velvet-frocked, laser-shooting interstellar vampire from Buck Rogers. And I gotta say, that looks pretty scary. Stephen King once talked about the three types of terror, and I often think about them while watching horror movies. Number one, the gross-out. The sight of a severed head tumbling down a flight of stairs. It's when the lights go out and something green and slimy splatters against your arm. I think this would best describe the strain or very gory vampires. Number two, the horror, the unnatural. Spiders the size of bears, the dead waking up and walking around. It's when the lights go out and something with claws grabs you by the arm. I think this best describes vampires like the ones from 30 Days of Night or Salem's Lot. Number three, the last and the worst one, terror. It's when you come home and notice everything you own 
have been taken away and replaced by an exact copy. It's when the lights go out and you feel something behind you. You hear it. You feel the breath against your neck. But when you turn around, there's nothing there. This is one of my favorite kinds of horror. I think Bram Stoker's Dracula is a great example of this. The way he feeds off him every night, shadows slipping around corners and lost in an endless maze-like castle. Ultimately, what makes something scary is subjective and can vary from person to person. Some people might find vampires with a more traditional appearance to be scarier, while others might find more modern, unconventional depiction of undead to be more frightening. I still think Nosferatu is one of the creepiest for sure and it mostly comes down to the unique qualities and the look of the film given its age. It makes the whole film feel like it's from another planet. If I had to pick what vampires I think are the scariest, I think it would be the ones from 30 Days of Night given their unique look and their feral nature. But the Strigoi also creep me out because of those worms. You guys let me know what vampire you think is the scariest, creepiest, or most unsettling. Nosferatu, the original Dracula, 30 Days of Night, or another one I didn't mention here. A special thank you to my members Roderick, Stephen556, Owen Wildish, and Joseph Roman. Also, I just hit 80,000 subscribers. The support you guys have been showing the channel means a lot. So to everyone that watches my videos, comments, and subscribes, I honestly can't thank you enough. If you enjoyed, leave a like, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and help me hit that milestone of 100k. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.